This one is so pretty and noteworthy right now. And this one's distinctive because look how it has these compound leaflets, compound leaves, and has little leaves mixed in with the big leaves. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. That's real distinctive. That's, an, that's called agrimony. And uh, it's used, not used so much medicinally, sometimes used sort of as an astringent, just a general astringent tonic. You know, it's not a plant I use a lot, but it's just so pretty right here. We just had to point it out. Makes little, makes little cockle burrs that'll stick to you later on in the year. Agrimony. So right in here, we have what forms, often will form real thick thickets along the edge of the creeks. It's called dog hobble. And, um, and it's actually a, actually a commercial plant. They, there's people, people in the higher mountains that actually gather it and sell it to florist suppliers because it never wilts. It won't wilt for a long time, so people will use it as the base for different kinds of flower organs. It's called dog hobble because it's one of those things that the, that the, um, that the, the, bear, the bear hunters will talk about it, that the, that the bears are kind of cone-shaped. And when the bears get chased by dogs, they just kind of put their nose down and run through the brush and they'll go through some of this stuff really thick. And those big old long-legged hounds get all hobbled up in it. And that's how it got named dog hobble. And, um, and then here we got the rhododendron, right? And, um, and a lot of mountain people call this laurel, call it big, big leaf laurel. And, um, and the rhododendron makes these thickets. Sometimes they call the thickets laurel hells. Or, um, and sometimes, sometimes you, you know, you'll, you'll be hiking along the Appalachian Trail and you think, I'm going to take a little shortcut and go down the trail. And maybe I'm going to cut off the trail and go through this little laurel thicket here. And next thing you know, about three hours later, you know, you're coming through this stuff and you're fighting your way through. You're trying to get through and it's kicking you in the gut and you're falling over and it's grabbing your pack and you're slamming your back. And, and after about three or four hours of this, you know, you climb up and think, oh, I, I got in this thicker than I thought. You climb up a tree to see if you can see where the laurel thicket ends and it goes on for miles, right? And then, and then, then this, 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 uh, this psychosis comes on. It's called <laughs> Laurel Thicket Syndrome. And it'll kind of make you a little crazy. And, you know, and there's actually been people, people have died from Laurel Thicket Syndrome. In fact, actually, there's this big mountain over, over a little east of here. And, um, and there was a fellow that was up there trying to explore that mountain. And he got Laurel Thicket Syndrome, fell off a waterfall, and he died. And they named that, water, they named that mountain after him. And they buried him on top of the mountain. And you can go up there on the top of Mount Mitchell, the highest mountain in the, in the eastern United States. You can go up there and you can see Professor Mitchell's grave up there. And uh, so be careful when you get in these laurel thickets. You know, but of course, it's a bane to hikers, but it's been a boon to wildlife because that's where the bear and the deer will hang out in the wintertime. It's sort of thicket, th thick and it prote protects them. And also a lot of moonshine been made back in laurel thickets like this, you know. And um, I don't know if I can show you. But I was... I was in the mountains with one of my one of my mountain buddies, and he said, "Did I ever show you how to make a laurel a laurel laurel crow call?" And uh, what he did, he got a stick like this, split it, and then just kind of shaved it off, made it smooth on the end, and then got a great big great big rhododendron leaf. And I'm hoping these aren't really the biggest leaves I've ever seen, but uh, maybe it'll be going big enough. Old Appalachian tradition, how to make a traditional crow call out of a laurel thicket, out of a laurel. Oops, I'm not sure this will work, let's see. One time I was in a laurel thicket and I just wanted to try to make one. I made one and all of a sudden I hear, whoop, 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 whoop. I look and there's a crow and it came in and it was backpedaling when it saw me. It was backpedaling and it flew off. And I blew it out. Hey guys, Hi. and uh, no, go for it. And um, and and I blew that. I blew that. Um, I blew it just a couple of times, and that crow came back even after it saw me. And it's amazing to me that you know, because crows are pretty wary. They don't usually come back, and he came back because he just was still curious about that call. So anyhow, you get while you get lost in the laurel thicket before you get laurel thicket syndrome. Sit down, and make your crow call. Maybe you can call in a crow. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Oh, well, I just I guess while we're here. While we're here, we ought to just look. There it is. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and some of you heard of golden seal. You know, it's one of the most, most valuable herbs used by herbalists. Yeah. And us herbalists are about to, about to love that golden seal to death. It's been extirpated in a lot of areas. But what's really nice is that it's, it's almost like the Creator wanted, to, wanted us to be able to have some of these yellow, bitter herbs. And so, so right where the golden, not much golden seal found in North Carolina. It usually, most of it stops right about the North Carolina line. And then uh, 
from but from there that they're down though and down all they say all the way to Florida you have yellow root you go out west and you have other plants with some of these same yellow bitters you go out and you have the Oregon holly grape you go in the east you have the barberry and um, it's yellow clean clear bitter it has no no uh, pungency to it and um, and it's used it's used as a um, as a as a stomach tonic it's used as it's somewhat as an antimicrobial and um, and uh, I've, I've talked to some holistic physicians who say they can use it use it often instead of antibiotics and what's amazing about it though is boy you taste it and you think now that's bitter and uh, we could even anybody want to taste a little bit there you go. Take some, pass it around, and I'll just keep breaking them off. But it's bitter, clear, clean bitter. Winter tonic, stomach tonic, mouth sores. Um, you know, in the old days, people used to have a bitter tonic before every meal. Nowadays, the only vestige we have of that is gin and tonic, right? And uh, and maybe Angostura bitters, or maybe Campari if you're really classy. Right. Yeah, I'll let you see the leaf. Here's study, study that leaf. And this is one plant that you can tell, even if in the winter time when the leaves are gone, you just break a little piece of the stem and look and see if that look for that yellow color. So you can't mistake it for anything else. If it's yellow like that, that's what it is. Well, if it's yellow like that and it looks like that. So pass that around and see who else got a basket. Want to hold it? Okay. Yeah, pass pass those around so people can have some. You want us to keep it? Yeah, sure. Let's keep it. Does the entire stem have the same? Yeah, but the root has the concentrate. And the Cherokees use it to dye for their basketry. They use it as a yellow dye. And they look like little fire. All right. Oh, look! Look what he's got here. I tell you, these kids are sharp. Oh, yeah. That's a coral. Oh, it is a coral. Oh, wow. It is a lactarius. How did you know that? The milk. <laughs> Got some smart kids here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, see when you touch it, how it bleeds? It's got milk, latex in it. So a lot of lactarius have kind of a bitter or a very acrid, hot kind of flavor. And so usually those are the ones you avoid. And the reason they call them lactarius is because they lactate. They give milk. So you see the milk coming out where it entered the gills. And so there's lots of different types, different colors, and they have different colors of milk. And then uh, one of the ways to, uh, to identify them is the color, whether the milk stays the same color, whether it changes colors. Sometimes they bruise. Uh, the odor is an important thing. So um, when we're... Uh, when we're back at the house uh, later on, we'll, I'll get all the lactarius out, and for those people that are interested, we can like do that, you know, and smell them and see the different uh, um, responses to, to bruising and, and to uh, that sort of thing. And this, of course, looks like something that should be on the ocean floor. It's one of the coral mushrooms. Most of the coral mushrooms are mycorrhizal, meaning that they form a symbiotic relationship with uh, different species of trees and plants. A few of them are saprophytic, meaning that they grow on uh, decaying wood. Um, a few of them are edible. Uh, I found a nice fruiting this morning of one that's going to be uh, in our dinner. And uh, a lot of them are just very um, kind of mealy. They, if you cook them down, they cook down to nothing. And so they're not really toxic, but not something that we uh, like to collect for food, really. But again, these come in many different colors. You'll see bright gold, bright orange, um, red, pink, brown, many different things. So, uh, the coral mushrooms. I think purple ones too. Purple. Yeah, purple as well. Yeah. So that's one you're picking out of your basket. That's that, uh huh. That's edible. Is that this one? Yes, this is a chanterelle. This is, uh, we call it Cantharella cinnabarinus, the cinnabar chanterelle, which means cinnamon colored. Um, but it has this really um, unusual bright color 
Uh, most of the chanterelles are either yellow or a much paler orange than this. These are tend to be kind of small, but sometimes occur in huge uh, uh, groups, and so they are uh, a, a pretty decent edible. Okay, so we'll move on along, and, and uh, we'll just stop from time to time, and as people collect stuff, just bring it up, and we'll take a look at it and see what we've got. I love it having kids on, on the walks. <laughs>